a thread by Carlos Osuita. For whatever reason, someone wanted me to read about this. I read about as much as I cared to. It has nothing to do with Donald Trump. From the Daily Beast, RNC speaker canceled after boosting QAnon conspiracy theory about Jewish plot to enslave the world. I've said it a million times, but QAnon isn't a conspiracy theory. Nobody is talking about a conspiracy. A conspiracy is two or more people planning and calling out one or more crimes. I don't even know what you'd call the claim that we faked the moon landings. It may be a conspiracy theory if the claim is that all the fraudsters defrauded the government and pocketed the money from the program. But I think the claim is that the government defrauded us. In that case, it's not a conspiracy. A conspiracy theory is claiming that Jewish bankers control or are trying to control the world. The logistics are impossible, and believe me, Jewish people can barely run Israel, much less the world. They can't get along. I proved the only known wide-scale global conspiracy is the kind conspiracy theorists talk about. It took me years to find the evidence. First, I hired a researcher to go as deep as he could into the National Archives and find documents nobody has looked at for seven decades. He scanned all the originals, so there's no question that they're real. I did the rest, using those documents to find photos, newsreels, and old newspaper articles. I made a presentation that I hope to someday present to Joe Rogan, if I can publish my memoir. I'm going big or nothing. If I can find a high-powered literary agent to get a good old-fashioned publisher's bidding war going, then I'll do it. If nobody cares, I take it all to the grave with me. Everybody involved is dead anyway. Here's the thing about real conspiracies. The more widespread they are, the smaller the number of conspirators. The conspiracy I proved was the work of one man. He was the evil version of Trump. Like Trump, he hid all his capabilities. Initially, I was blown away, but the more skills I uncovered, the more mundane it became, in the sense that I'd accepted that this man was motivated entirely by the challenge. He had no need for fame, glory, or power. The world was his private university, laboratory, testing ground, battlefield, and theme park. He was dedicated solely to seeing what he could do. I can't say he had a cover because his legitimate job was real. He revolutionized his industry. He changed everything from top to bottom, technically and organizationally. And he did it anonymously, letting others take the credit. That's why every corporation in his industry fought for him. He cared nothing whatsoever about recognition. Therefore, he left almost no trace. And he was probably the most significant figure in his field. In his other life, he worked entirely alone, mercilessly using others and disposing of them when they'd done their jobs. He fooled all governments on the face of the earth. I read FBI and CIA reports, and I laugh at what children they were in comparison. Jesse Ventura is a buffoon. Alex Jones, Oliver Stone, every single guest on Coast to Coast AM, they're all like the people in Plato's cave. In Plato's allegory, people are chained to the wall of a cave all of their lives, facing a blank wall. The people watch shadows projected on the wall from objects passing in front of a fire behind them, and give names to these shadows. The shadows are the prisoner's reality. All you have to do is stop and think of any of the horse manure that people believe, and it falls apart. There are too many people involved. I mean, the FBI tried to take down Trump, and the conspiracy was uncovered almost immediately. Two of the conspirators were like horny teenagers. But you want me to believe that the Rothschilds have this global army of perfectly disciplined adults who've been working for centuries on this project? Everybody claims to know every single detail about it. Serial killers taunt the cops by leaving clues. That's how they're caught. 
You tell me that the Rothschilds need 80 million clues a day picked right up by internet detectives? <laughs> that anti-Trump I talked about earlier taunted nobody. He had no need to. Why would he taunt his inferiors? It was beneath him. He actually <laughs> never made a mistake. Technology overtook him. Since he pulled off his greatest feat 70 to 40 years ago, he had no way of anticipating that someday we'd have a thing called the Internet. Old newspapers would be put online. I could contact people living in other countries and get information from them. The National Archives changed its rules and made old military records available to the general public. All I needed were two Old high school yearbooks were put online. Social media has sunk a lot of people. Old high school yearbooks have told me who they are. They give me a face, then I can find that face. All, all the conspiracy theories that you've heard are bollocks, as the British say. Joe Rogan is the only person I trust to whom I can give the presentation. We can't show the audience, of course, but he can see it and react on the air. But I have to get a publishing contract first, big or nothing. I got a blockbuster on my hands. I go back and read the manuscript and look at the presentation and I marvel at what I accomplished. Joe had on a guy named Joey Diaz, whom I don't know anything about. He said some stories have to be told regardless of the risk to the teller. I've removed all identifiers from my book. Names, dates, places, they don't matter because the book is about the search. And the story involves so many people who have no idea about any of this. I can't name names because those people would be harassed without mercy. I have insurance. If anything happens to me, I wish the malefactors well. After you read the book, you won't want to dig into this. People whine about being punished for saying Jewish people are trying to control the world. After you read what I uncovered, you won't get near any of it. Not if you have any sense of self-preservation. Besides, I've hidden the tracks too well. I'm sure people will identify me, but so what? It ain't me you need to worry about, kids. The world isn't what you think it is. Conspiracy theories are parlor games. People indulge in them because they know that there will be no consequences if they talk about them publicly. As I said, I have insurance, and luckily, I made some very good friends. My goal is to tell a story and leave it at that. No career, no endless speaking tours. I just want to be left alone. But as Joey Diaz said, some stories must be told. My story has no bearing on today. The only relevance to today is that it'll show you that you're wasting your time worrying about the Rothschilds. I was able to uncover the doings of one man, as careful as he was, and I can prove it. None of the classic popular culture conspiracy theories can be proven, not even one of them. Addendum. This is the thread that Marianne Mendoza retweeted. The only reason I use the Daily Beast is that it was the first article that actually gave me the details of this non-event. I've never read the publication. Thank you for listening.